It just so happened that that day, um, the college librarian had been looking in the college vault, in the college safe, um, for another rare book, a 19th century book, and had seen some other things there. And, and it transpired that there was not one but four medieval books there. So they've been kind of rediscovered. I think they were last known about in the 90s. So um, it's, yeah, it, it's uh, an exciting find. The four books are very different. One of them is Book of Hours from 15th century France, um, and that's a, a standard prayer book um, with some very beautiful pictures in it. The second book, which is the largest book, is a, an administrative book of statutes and regulations from a charity in the early 15th century from the city of Siena in Italy. Um, the third book is a small collection of um, classical wisdom, so writings of people like Aristotle, Plato, Seneca, gathered together um, in Latin, and that would have been read by monks in the city of Verona in Italy. And the fourth book is a Latin printed text of the history of the Trojan War. Um, so that's a kind of history book, a kind of thrilling narrative about ancient history. So we've got very, four very different facets of medieval culture. We've got everyday worship in the Book of Hours. We've got um, re the regulation of religion in the Book of Statutes from Siena. We've got classical humanist wisdom in the book from Verona. And then we've also got kind of um, popular entertainment, classical entertainment in the book, in the printed book. The Book of Hours is a 15th century prayer book. It's quite small, about nine, uh, nine centimetres by 12 centimetres. It's very beautifully illuminated with um, different colours and also the use of um, gilt leaves. And it comes from France. With, you know, it, it not only has um, uh, the Latin prayers, which you'd expect, and Latin services you'd expect in a book of hours, but it also has a French calendar at the front with the names of the saints in French. A book of hours is um, a little prayer book, and um, they come from the monastic hours, which um, were s services, different kinds of services, which were told, um, w which were sung at different times of the day in the monastic houses. The book of hours. Um, really showcased this little, um, these condensed services, and they made them, it possible for people to say their own prayers and their own services, perhaps outside of church, outside of a monastic house. The beginning of the Psalter has a little image of um, King David kneeling. I mean, really all the illustrations show not people in their own times, not King David in his own time, but um, sort of contemporary people um, imagined as King David. So he's dressed very beautifully like a, um, as if he were a 15th century king with a um, fur collar. Um, he's kneeling and um, the whole of the scene represents kind of fashionable picture. There's paving on the floor. It's a very beautifully carved kneeling desk that he kneels at. Um, and you can you can tell he's King David because there's a um, his harp behind him. So King David is thought to be the author of the um, Psalms, and so he that's his symbol, if you like. That's how medieval people identified icons and iconography by the things which people carried. And for King David, it was a it was a harp. It's true that. It's now easier than ever for people to encounter a medieval manuscript through the internet and to get a sense of the physical form of a book. And that's, that's great. And it's really wonderful that collections like the British Library are digitizing so many of their medieval books. However, what the, an online encounter with a book is a very different encounter from a physical a manual encounter with a book. Um, one of the things that you don't get through an online encounter is a sense of things like the binding or the physical size of the book. And in the case of, say, the Birkbeck Book of Hours, you get very little sense in a digital picture of it of the detail and the intricacy and the fineness of the illustrations.
being able to have that kind of encounter with something which is hundreds and hundreds of years old, I think is a really, really valuable experience and one that I'm very proud at Birkbeck we're able to start again thanks to the rediscovery of these books. <laughs>